All right, uh, today we are going to do the bit where I ask you to list the thing that you are most confused about. So let's go around the room and we'll pick something that you are most confused about. If you have more than one thing, um, feel free to contribute more than one thing. But um, I'd expect that you have at least one thing. All right. Who wants to go first? to make, um, how can I explain it, like um, making the drop down and the data like match, almost, like for example in lab, what was it, seven, how, you know, you click the genre of the movie and then once you click it, okay. the name, so yeah, trying to make them clash together. Okay, so we're going to have a drop down which feeds to a grid view. Yes. And query added. Yeah. So we're going to have a drop down. When we select something from the drop down, it will change the grid view. Yes. And it will filter based on that. Yes. With the query. Right, with the query. Yes. <laughs> right. Next. We're going over things that you are most confused about. Um, back to that.
the idea of the template column is this. Both the grid view and the detail view have a default behavior. All right? They have a default behavior. They behave a certain way. And the default behavior is pretty much like this. That the data displays in a label if you're in read-only mode. So if you're in read-only mode, the data displays as a label. If you go into edit mode, then any editable field will be a text box. Unless it's a, unless it's a Boolean, then it becomes a checkbox. All right? In addition, if you are in insert mode, the data goes into um, the data uh, displays as a uh, text box if it's editable. If it's not editable, it is um, in a label. If it's a boolean, it's a checkbox. All right. So where were we last time? I created an insert on the grid view. All right, so this will be a good opportunity to explore creating the templates because, if I remember right, that was a little exercise I had you work on with the last half hour of class. Is try to make those things into template columns. So let's start. Set this as a start page. Now, if you want something to be different than the default behavior that I just described, in other words, simply speaking, labels and text boxes for the most part, with a handful of exceptions. If you want something to be different than that, then you have to make it into a template column. Now, why would you want it to be different than that? There's two main reasons that you would want it different than that. Number one is you would want to put validation on it. All right. There is no default validation scheme um, with the grid view or the details view. You get a text box, but there's no validators associated with it. So if I want to validate to make sure that the user enters a field in, then I would make it into a template column, and then I can add the validator. The other reason is if there is a limit um, to what you can enter in a field. For example, in the case of our customer table, there's a foreign key to the sales rep table where we have to choose a sales rep from the list of valid sales reps. All right? And in that case, we would also want a template column because we would want um, not to have a text box where the user can enter anything in, but we'd want a drop down where the user can only pick one of the legit sales reps. So, Anytime you want anything different than the default behavior, and again, those are two classic examples of that. You want to be able to enter in the value um, and, and make sure it, it, it's valid, all right, so some sort of validator. Or you don't want a plain text box, but you want the user to be able to pick from a radio button or from a drop down or whatever. So let's look at this example and we'll see here the issue in add mode. So if I run this, and I click to insert, I get an empty screen. Now, there's no validation at all on this, and the sales rep ID, which is a text box, should be a drop down. So that's the two things that I want to change about this. I want to add a validator to the customer name, and I want to make the sales rep ID be a drop down. Because right now, as it stands, I can leave the sales rep ID blank, and I can put any old garbage in the 
I, or rather I can leave the customer name blank and I can put any old garbage in the sales rep ID. I click insert and it's going to blow up. Eventually. Now these are preventable errors. All right, I could easily put code in there to validate it. And I could easy, easily put code in there to make that a drop down. So if you can prevent an error from occurring, that's like better than letting the error occur and displaying a user friendly message. So that's your motivation for doing template columns. So let's see mechanically how we do that. All right, so let's look at that details page. And I'd click edit columns or edit fields rather. Now customer name is already a template field as its sales rep ID. If they were not already a template field, I would need to click on make them a template field. There'd be a little link here that says convert to template column. So these were already template columns because we did, uh, we created a template uh, for them for change mode. All right. But if there were, if they were not already template columns, we would click that and say convert. Let me show you with nonprofit, although I'm not going to do that. Right there, convert into a template field. All right. So the first time through that you did anything with that, you'd have to click that to convert it to a template field. If you've already converted it to a template field, you don't have to do it again. All right. So with the template field, you can then go in and edit the templates. Now, every one of our template fields are going to be listed here. Customer name, sales rep ID, and so on. And what's more, there's sort of five different modes that you can edit. You can make it look different for five different modes. We've really only concentrated on three of those modes, but there's two other ones as well. There's the item template. And the item template is how it's going to look when you are in read-only mode. So, if in this case, we don't really want to do anything in read-only mode for our customer name. So we don't have to change the item template for that. Alternating item template allows us to stagger stuff if there's more than one row. All right? Or change the styling on it or whatever to make it uh, a little more readable. You know how sometimes if you have a long table of data, you can alternate colors on the row or whatever and that allows you to make it more readable. All right, header template is something else we can do, but we're largely going to ignore that one. The two that we're interested in here, though, is we've already done the edit item template. Now we're going to do the insert item template. So you do have the ability to make it look and behave different in the insert mode versus the edit mode. Normally, you would want those to be the same, and you have to duplicate your effort. That's the breaks, right? Sorry, but you just have to do it twice. All right. I wish there was an easier way that we said use the same template for uh, edit and uh, um, insert, but there isn't. So you have to duplicate it. So for this field, customer name, I want to go into the insert item template. And what we have here is a text box, which is fine, but there's no validator. So what I can do is I can add the validation control to that template column. So I can go and drag the required field validator in to that template cell. All right. And then I can go in and say that the control to validate is text box 1, the text box for customer name. And the error message can be something like must 
enter customer name. So what's our process? Convert it to a template field if it hasn't already been that. Then go into edit templates and you can edit the item template, which is read only mode, the insert template, which is when you're in insert mode, and the edit template when you're in edit mode. And then you can make whatever changes you need to. In this case, all we did is we added a validator. All right. So now when we go and run this, if we go into insert mode, if we leave that blank and do an insert, we get our validation message. Must enter customer name. So if we enter that and click insert, now we're getting an error because the sales rep is required and we didn't supply a value for that. So that's how we would add a required field validator to a template column. All right? Typically, if it's required when you insert, it's going to be required when you edit it too. So you need to do that in both places. All right? Read-only mode is probably okay to just leave it as a text box because, you know, if it's, if it's free-form entry of text, a, a label you can't edit anyhow, so there's no need to put validation on it. All right. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to do a drop-down for the sales rep. And that's just a little bit trickier. All right. The idea is the same. If it's not already a template column, we convert it to a template column. We then go into either edit or insert or item template to make the appropriate change. So, I'm going to go here and I'm going to say I want to edit the edit item template for sales rep ID. So there's all my template fields, customer name, sales rep ID. I want to edit the edit, oh, I'm sorry, the insert item template. I believe we already did the edit item template. So we're going to do this time, we're going to do the insert item template. And there you have it. By default, it's a text box, right? Because that's the default behavior of details you use in grid views. But because it's a template, we can customize it. So I'm going to delete the text box. And I'm going to drag over instead a drop-down list. Now, the drop-down list is going to get its values from somewhere, right? Where is it going to get its values from? It's going to get its values from a SQL query. So it's going to get its values from a SQL data source. Well, because we would already did the edit mode, we already have a SQL data source for that. So. Otherwise, we would go and create a SQL data source. And our SQL, SQL data source says select star from sales rep. All right? Because that's what we want in the drop down. We want a listing of all the sales reps. All right? So what I have to do is I have to do a couple of things. I have to do edit data bindings and choose data source. This, I could see where this is a little confusing because you have to do both pieces. Choose data source says where the data comes from in the dropdown. Well, where does the data come from in the dropdown? We want the data to be a list of sales reps. What data source has a list of sales reps? Well, SQL data source 2 does. So I will click choose data source. I'll pick SQL data source 2. Then I have to specify what data do I want to display? All right, what's going to make sense to the user? And I'm going to pick I forget the names of the fields here. Let me go and look. I'll pick last name. That's the data 
field to display. Remember, the display field is going to be what's going to make sense to the user. Mm -hmm. the, the, the data field is going to be, or, or rather the value of it, is going to be what's going to make sense to the script, what the scripts need. And the scripts need actually the ID. So I will say sales rep ID. Click OK. So I chose a data source. I said where the values get, where the values in that drop down come from, how it gets populated. Now I have to attach that value from the drop down to the appropriate column in the table. Right? All we're doing now is we're picking a sales rep. We're not putting that sales rep anywhere. We have to define that in order to put it somewhere. So I'll go into edit data bindings. And I will say bind sales rep ID. And what does that mean? That means that the value associated with this drop down is going to go in the customer table in the column named sales rep ID. All right, so we have to do that as well. Otherwise, we'd have a list of sales reps. We could select the sales rep and click OK or whatever, or click, click it from the list. But when we went to save it, it wouldn't put that sales rep ID in the customer table. So this is responsible for putting the, customer, or putting the sales rep where it belongs in the customer table. So I'm going to go and run this. I'm going to go and insert a new customer. And notice that that's populated. I can pick the sales rep. If I try to save it, it gives me that error. And I can pick and say, maybe this is Bless you. Towns Incorporated or whatever. And I can click Save, and there's a new thing, and it's added with Davis as a sales rep. So in a nutshell, templates mean that you're deviating from the default behavior of the grid view or the details view. The way they work is virtually the same on a details view and a grids view. I mean, if we were going to do this on the grid view, we would have done exactly the same thing. The only difference being is that a grid view doesn't have insert mode. We first of all, whatever thing on the, whatever element we want to treat differently than a default, we go in and make it into a template column. We then can though, go and edit the different templates. That is, we can edit how it's going to look in read-only mode, which is the item template, or the edit mode, which is the edit template, or the insert mode, which is the insert template. And we can add validators, and we can add drop-downs, and whatever. All right? Questions about any of this? All right. I hope that helped. All right, let's go now to the other one where we have a drop down that's tied to a query. So I'm going to break a, I'm going to break, uh, I'm going to make a, what am I going to do? I'm going to make a brand new page. Just, just start from scratch, a brand new page. And I'm going to talk about this first before we go and do it. Because I think it's important to understand every step of the way. And what I'm going to do is this. Let me sketch out what we're going to have first. And then we'll actually go and do it. So what we want is something like this. We want the top of the page to have a drop down. Then it's going to have a value of all the sales reps. It's going to be in a drop. Are going to be in a drop down. 
we're going to have a grid view that's going to show customers for the selected sales rep. So as we pick our sales rep here, this grid view is going to change to show only the customers for that sales rep. So we're filtering it out. All right? we'll, we're not showing every customer all the time. We're allowing the user to pick the sales rep and then show just those, those uh, customers that match that sales rep. How many data sources are we going to have for this? Two. Two. Why two? Because you'll need data for the sales reps and data for the customers. Exactly. Uh, a good guideline is, is, is just verbally describe what the data needs to be. This is a list of sales reps, a list of all sales reps, more precisely. This is a list of sales reps for, I'm sorry, a list of customers for the selected sales rep. So just the verbal description is different. So it can't be the same data source, right? Mm -hmm. Just by definition, it can't be. We describe two very different things. So therefore, if I had something on the page, like for example, the other one, um, I already had a, uh, where I added the dropdown for sales rep uh, in the insert mode. Mm -hmm. I already had a data source that showed a listing of all sales reps. So I didn't need to make a new sales rep. I already had that. So if I verbally described it, well, that's a list of sales reps, and here I need a list of sales reps. I don't need to create a new one, but here I need two of them. What's the SQL statement going to look like for this data source? Select star from sales rep. What's the SQL statement going to look like for this one? Like star, let's say, from um, customer mm -hmm. where sales rep ID equals question mark. Where sales rep ID equals question mark. How did you know that this one needed a where clause and this one didn't? Because you have because you're you're selecting data from a specific based on the sales rep. Okay. Like All right. You're absolutely right. A different way to put it, a different way to put it is, in this we want everything. In this we only want some of them. All right. So when you only want some of something, you're going to filter out the stuff that you want via a where clause. All right. In this case, I want to see every sales rep. So there's no where clause. I just want to see every sales rep. There's no where clause. You're going to get everyone. In this, do I want to see all the customers? No, I only want to see certain customers. Mm -hmm. Which customers do I want to see? I want to see those customers whose sales rep matches the drop value of the drop down. Now, when we create the data source, we represent this, which is a parameter, with a question mark. In other words, if this page always was going to show sales rep 1, I could put a 1 there. Um, if this was always going to show sales rep 2, I could put a 2 there. We don't know what value the person selects. We just know whatever they select, that's the sales rep we want to see. So we put a question mark in there, and that's a parameter. Another way to think of a parameter is it's a blank that's going to get filled in when you run this. And then we have to say, well, where does that blank get filled in from? And in this case, it gets filled in from the drop-down. All right? All right. We have a drop-down. We have a grid view. We're going to have two, thank you, two data sources. One of them is going to be a list of all sales reps. One of them is going to be a list of customers for the selected sales rep. 
What ties them together is this parameter where we specify, hey, we don't want to see every customer. We only want to see the customers of this sales rep. And oh yeah, by the way, the specific value gets filled in from the value of the dropdown. So let's go and make this. And I'll make a brand new page. Thank you. So I'm going to go to new file. I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to fill in the stuff that I said we're going to have. There's my drop down list. Here's my grid view. Here is my first data source. Here's my second data source. So, my first data source, I'm going to go in and say configure data source. I want this connection string. I want select star from sales rep. Test it out. That works. All right. Now I'm going to do this one. going to make sense to the user, so it's going to be last name. 
What I want to be the value, again, is what the script needs. It's what's going to get filled in in the query. And I want the value to be the actual ID, all right, not the name. So therefore, I pick sales rep ID. All right. Again, a drop down has two pieces of it. It has the part that the user sees, and it has the value that's behind the, 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 behind the scenes. The part the user sees should be something descriptive so that the user understands that that's what it means. The um, value uh, for the drop-down is oftentimes going to be the primary key, right? Because that's what we need for databases. That's what we need to stick into a foreign key, for example. All right? Okay. Last but not least, I have to do the same thing for this grid view. And I choose data source, SQL data 2. All right. That's all I really need to do. And I run it. set this to the start page, which I thought I had done, but I guess I didn't. And now, notice it only shows sales rep ID of one, which is Smith. All right, now this doesn't work. Pardon me? I, yeah, I need to do one of two things. That doesn't work because in order for the query to work, it has to go back to the server. In order for the, it to go back to the server, it has to be submitted. In order for it to be submitted, you need one of two things. Either you need to make the drop-down auto post back, or you need to put a button on there. So I'm going to take the easier way out and make this an auto post back. And I'm going to run this and... As I select that, then it changes and shows okay. the other sales rep. Now, what does the auto postback undo again? The auto postback says when you ever you change the value of the drop down, send send the data to the server okay. and let the server do whatever it needs to do. Respond with it. back. Okay. Yeah, respond back. Okay. Absolutely. You can get the same effect by having a button. Okay. All right. Okay. Questions. All right, we're going to adjourn for today. I'm going to try to leave plenty of time for you to work on your labs if you have questions. So we're going to go to lab, and I'll be back to get my stuff. Um, I'll be back in lab in a few minutes.